Hi guys, Jeffrey here. In this video, I want to show you the one reason and the only reason really of why long-term relationships fail. And I want you to stick around to the very end of this video because in this video, I'm going to show you the realization that I've made that once I made this realization, it really changed everything for me. You know, when I was trying to save my relationship, I spent six years of my life and also close to $15,000 in education and resources and therapy and coaching programs, etc., trying to decipher what other experts are saying. And I realized that, you know, the most common diagnosis that a lot of experts have about why relationships fail is really not the root. And once I discovered this root, that was when my life and relationship really begins to change. And I think if you talk to a lot of my clients as well, they'll find that once they realize this one root, that's when everything becomes really clear for them as well. So I want to give you the same level of clarity. So be sure to stick around to the very end of this video to find out what I'm trying to say here. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages with the right skills and knowledge to be able to save your relationship from the brink of divorce and really do it by yourself. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also click that bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before I begin this video, I also want to let you know that the masterclass, the free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you want to join that masterclass or if you want to submit your application for the relationships revival program that I have, then be sure to stick around to the very end of this video for the announcement on how you can join that masterclass and submit your application as well. So when I was in my journey of trying to figure out what is the real reason, why is my relationship failing? I found that there are really five common reasons that the experts would cite. And the first reason here is that one or both of you may have some personal issues that you need to deal with. So those personal issues can manifest itself in the form of, let's say, depression, let's say, anxiety, self-esteem issues. So often you will hear your partner, for example, saying, hey, I want space from this relationship because I'm having a midlife crisis or you think she's having a midlife crisis. Or maybe one or both of you are doing a lot of toxic things in a relationship because of some self-preservation defense mechanism that you have developed due to some self-esteem issue. Or maybe here there could be some neediness in the picture as well, but Whatever the problems are, you know, if you watch these experts on YouTube, on the articles, etc., they'll always say, oh, your relationship can't succeed because one of you is not really complete yet. And if you're not complete yet, you're not really ready for a relationship yet. Now, the second reason that I often hear is really that this is really due to a lack of ability to communicate. So whenever problems come, you end up arguing, it ends up degrading into a conversation, it becomes a battle your relationship becomes more of a battlefield. Now, the third thing that I often hear is that the real root reason is because your partner and you, you're being competitive. Basically, you're not seeing yourself as a whole unit that works together towards a common goal, but you're seeing yourself as he says, she says, taking sides. And so both of you are approaching this relationship from a very selfish place. And I think there's actually a TED talk on this topic exactly uh, if you search for why relationships fail, you will see that tech talk right there front and center. And reason number four that I often hear is that there's often this mysterious loss of chemistry, the loss of spark, the loss of the magic dust in the relationship as well. And this usually happens for longer term relationships where over time, as the spark dies down, people start to look for other relationships. People start to look for the spark elsewhere that they're missing in the relationship as well. And number five really is the inability to align on key issues and key issues like, for example, finances. I mean, if you look at the reasons why a lot of couples break down is because of big, big issues like finances, children, etc., and they can't seem to align on those issues. So if you look at what most experts say, they will say these five reasons are really the main reasons why. Now, in my experience though, you know, when I was trying to save my own relationship and really trying to understand it on a much deeper level, and also when my clients are doing it, we realize here that these are not the real reasons. There's something underneath that that is deeper, that is more of a core issue. And that issue that we found is really the lack of emotional safety. So if you're new to my channel, you will not know what emotional safety is, but let's spend a moment here talking about what emotional safety really is. Emotional safety, the crux behind emotional safety is really one question. Do you both, you to your partner and your partner to you, do you both feel free to share the toughest, the most difficult, the most sensitive, the most painful emotions, issues, problems that you have in yourself and also in your relationship? And when you answer this question, I want you to have a higher standard by which you measure yourself here. In that when we talk about 
having very high emotional safety. We're talking about being able to share these very painful things without having any second thoughts, without having any hesitation. So a lot of us, we say, for example, yeah, I will eventually share, but when I do share, I do think a lot about what I'm gonna share, how I'm gonna share it. If you do, you might not have as much emotional safety as you think. And can you do this? Can you share to each other without having to assume the worst in each other as well? So usually when people bring up something in their mind, yes, they will bring it up and the other person will listen to it. But when you're bringing up or listening to it, you're sort of really on guard because you're either afraid of how the other person might react or you're kind of receiving what the other person is sharing and thinking, oh my God, what now? Can you do this without really dreading the conversation, either dreading bringing up the conversation or dreading listening to the conversation? Or can you do this without needing to essentially brace yourself? If you need to do any of these four things, that means that you may not have enough emotional safety in your relationship. Now, the thing to note about this emotional safety and why this is really the root is that this is the core of why your relationship has so many layers of hopelessness. Sure, the problems of the relationship makes people feel a bit hopeless. I mean, whenever you have financial issues, whenever you have sexual intimacy issues, yes, it does put a ding in the relationship, but that's not what causes relationships to fail and eventually break down to the point of divorce, separation, um, people wanting space, people feeling hopeless, etc. The thing that makes people feel really hopeless is really the fact that there is not enough safety and trust to be able to even express these things sometimes. So if you can't even express the real painful stuff, the real sensitive stuff, then you can't even solve it. And this multi-layered effect of not only the problems itself, but also the, pro the fact that you can't even share the problems, let alone come up with a solution to it, that's what makes couples feel utterly hopeless. Now, to make matters worse here, you also have to understand that safety gets destroyed from the bottom up. So the illusion that a lot of people fall into is that, oh, you know, m my partner and I share a lot of things, so that can be, we can't have a safety issue. Well, why does my partner still want a divorce if she shares things with me still? Well, it's not about how many things she's sharing with you. It's the one thing that she's not, because safety gets destroyed from the bottom up. So it's the most difficult, the most sensitive, the most painful, the most fearful, and the most deepest, darkest thing that she feels that she thinks about. That's the part that she's not sharing. And that's the part that will fester. And that's the part that creates the most hopelessness on. And when you really think about it, I think this is often how you feel as well and why you often have secretly, maybe subconsciously, thoughts of wanting to leave the relationship as well or wanting to give up on the relationship. It's not because of the problems. It's not because of the money issues, whatever it is, but usually because you can't even talk about the issues that you have because there's not enough safety and trust to do it. That's the part that makes you even feel really hopeless. And if you still don't see this, if you still don't see how this is really the root of everything, let's take a look at, again, the five reasons why experts think that relationships fail. And the first reason, again, is one or both person has personal issues. And I hear this a lot, you know, well, Jeff, I can't save the relationship because my partner is having depressive issues and she needs to go through it herself. Well, your relationship there is not breaking down because your partner is having depression. Your relationship is breaking down because she's not choosing to share the depression, her insecurities, her midlife crisis. She's not choosing to share it and go through it with you. And the reality that you have to understand here is that with a lot of my clients and myself, for example, is that once you create and you're able to create emotional safety, a deep sense of emotional safety, your problems no longer become problems because now the problems become a part where you can actually share, you can actually find a resolution on, you can actually find understanding on. So the problems become less of a threat, but more of an opportunity. But that's only if you have emotional safety. Same thing for if we talk about loss of chemistry. We you know we take a lot of clients, for example, who have been married for 20, 30 years and they definitely have that loss of chemistry, loss of spark. But once they create emotional safety and they're able to create a deep sense of emotional safety, they can finally talk about the very painful, the very deep, the very sensitive, the very embarrassing secrets, fantasies that they have. And they can finally start to revive that spark over time. But the first ingredient they need is that emotional safety. So again, with emotional safety, it doesn't matter what your problems are. The important thing is that now you've basically freed up the pipes between the two of you so that you can share it. And once you share it, you can understand it. And once you can understand it, you can also find resolutions to it. And usually there are many, many resolutions to it once you start expressing your issues. So again, just to really make sure I drill this down in your heads, relationships never ever fail because of the problems itself. But relationships fail because there's a lack of safety and trust to share, let alone solve 
the problems that plague the relationship. So if this is the one root cause, and this is such an important root cause, it seems, then why don't more people talk about it? And why don't people know about it as well? To understand that, we go to the third point here, which is that when you look at the mechanics of how safety is destroyed, it's destroyed by a long-term feedback loop. So to understand what this means, we need to understand what a feedback loop is first. And basically a feedback loop is when one entity or an input leads to an output or affects another entity. And the entity, the second entity, re-affects entity number one as well. And this cycle keeps going. That's why it's called a feedback loop. And the thing to understand about feedback loops is that this governs everything in life, everything in nature, even your relationship. So for example, I'm sure you've gone to a concert before and you know when the performers stop performing and when they finish, you see three people standing up, they start clapping, and then the three people clapping leads to more people clapping. Now 10 people are clapping, then 20 people are clapping, and it keeps going. The snowball effect keeps going until eventually the whole stadium is clapping. That's an example of a feedback loop where one thing happening leads to another thing, leads to another thing, and eventually it compounds that effect. This even happens with weather. As the weather gets hotter because of global warming, people use more electricity to try to cool themselves down, their homes down. But the more they try to cool their homes down, they use more electricity, leading to more greenhouse emissions, which leads to more heat, then starts to cycle all over again. And this phenomenon happens in your relationship too, where what you do affects what your partner does. So for example, if you come home angry, that will make your partner angry. And when your partner gets angry, you get angry back. And before you know it, it snowballs. And the other thing to understand about feedback loops is that it always leads to what we call exponentiality. So either exponentiality going upwards or exponentiality going downwards. And the best example of this is really through finances. So if you take a dollar and you add a 10% interest to that dollar every single day, so compounding every day, you will see kind of a curve like this where eventually it's going to just become this massive amount of money within one year, for example, if you compound it every day. And the same thing happens with relationships. So in the beginning, as you respond badly to your partner in very subconscious ways often, in the beginning, in the beginning of the relationship, it's nothing will really happen. But then eventually things compound and leads to an exponential either growth or decline. And the whole point of why I'm telling you this is to introduce to you this concept of the hockey stick effect. And the fact that when you have exponentiality, you always have what we call the hockey stick effect. And it's called the hockey stick effect because simply this curves, the exponential curve looks like a hockey stick in a way. And the hockey stick effect here is really marked by this pattern where nothing seems to be happening for a very long time. And when nothing is happening like this, either going up or down, this is where people remain quite oblivious to their problems. But you can bet here that even in these moments when nothing is really happening, that a lot of feedback loops are happening, either going up or down. But then suddenly after this period of nothingness, you have this moment where either things go exponentially up or exponentially down, where suddenly everything seems to happen, good or bad, all at once. And this is really the moment people start to panic. And this is where people start to mix diagnose their problems and say, oh, it's because of a lack of communication, oh, it's because of money problems. Well, actually, it's not because of any of those things, it's because of the many times, the many, many loops you've done to destroy the safety over time. And if you're watching this video right now, this is probably what's happening to you as well, where there's been many, many feedback loops, bad feedback loops has caused you to destroy the safety over time, but you just didn't know about it. And you only knew about it when things get really bad suddenly really fast. That's when you started to panic. That's when you started to have all these analysis of, okay, why is my divorce happening? But what you need to understand here is that when you see the problems of safety and also the problems of the relationship, when your partner wants divorce, etc., that's when the safety has really been destroyed many times over. That safety destruction has been compounded so many times over such a long period of time. So it's not just one reason or one thing of why your relationship is failing. The destruction of safety is not destroyed by just by, just by one moment. It's destroyed by the many moments you have in your relationship. So that's one reason, one really good reason why most people don't understand that their relationship is really breaking down because of the loss of safety and trust and why they misdiagnose it because it's not just one moment of a loss of safety here. It's many moments of loss of safety compounded together. The second reason why most people don't understand that safety is really the root core behind their issues is that safety gets destroyed very, very subconsciously. And oftentimes we're not even aware of the fact that we're destroying safety. So for example, 
Here's a simple example of how we destroy safety. Let's say you're lying with your partner at night and the temperature is kind of hot in the bedroom. And so you bring it up to your partner and say, hey, honey, can I turn on the temperature? And she gets kind of pissy at you because she's tired, she's sleepy, and she's kind of comfortable right now. She doesn't want to change the temperature. You start to think, oh, now I have this one problem, which is the temperature is going to be a problem. And now I have another problem where I can't even talk about the temperature. And so with your partner's reaction here, you have one problem, then you're adding on another problem to that. And your partner is not going to be conscious of this. She's not going to be aware that what she did was she just destroyed safety. But you've definitely felt that loss of safety yourself. And the same thing happens vice versa to your partner whenever you respond in often the ways that you think is natural, that you are used to responding. But what you don't know is that that's actually destroying safety for your partner. And the worst part about this too is that you won't consciously know that you've destroyed safety for your partner and vice versa. Because the hallmark of having no safety is that nobody can share it. Nobody talks about it. So if nobody talks about it, nobody shares about it, you will never know the moments when you destroyed safety because she will never tell you about it. And so safety gets destroyed over a long period of time and you never have the consciousness about the fact that it's getting destroyed. And this is again, usually what's been happening to you as well. Probably if you are in a brink of a divorce right now or a brink of a separation, you've guaranteed been destroying safety for a very long time. But the way you destroy safety, you just were never aware about it. You were never aware of the many ways you destroy safety. And that's the second reason why most people never understand the fact that their relationship is really breaking down, not because of all these issues, but because of the lack of safety as well. And so if this happens, the problem, because you're unaware of the problem even existing, becomes worse and worse over time, leading to that uh, exponentiality going down and eventually leading to the hockey stick effect going down, which is where you guys are at now. So once we understand the root of all relationship issues is really based on this one thing, that's actually a really good thing because now you basically have one root for the many overwhelming issues that you think you have in your relationship. And if you have this one root behind the many issues, you have to realize also that your situation is not that unique. You know, it's really funny to see a lot of our clients when they join the program that I have, they always start off by thinking that their situation is unique until they realize the gravity and the, the powerfulness of emotional safety and the principle behind it. And only then do they realize, oh, it doesn't really matter what problems I have. It doesn't really matter how intense the problems are. And it doesn't really matter what the issues are that is causing my divorce, etc. That if I have emotional safety, then that really fixes everything else. And so the solution here is always the same. Right? You want to create safety first and foremost, but in order for you to create safety, you have to know the frameworks to be able to turn the negative moments like resistances, uh, misunderstandings, conflicts into more of a positive. And in order for you to know the frameworks and be able to execute the frameworks, not only using the right words, but also using the right micro expressions, the right micro tones, you need to have what we call the bulletproof mindset. And having the bulletproof mindset here is more than just, you know, just using willpower to keep calm. It's, it takes a more finesse approach than that. And so if you want more content on this, I'm gonna put a link above my head here with some information on what this bulletproof vest really means, bulletproof mindset really means. And if you also want to be able to play out the frameworks and also the bulletproof mindset in such a natural way, where your partner can feel that it's a part of you and you're not just trying to fake things, you need to go through what we call identity shifting, where we let go of the way you identify yourself in the old ways and really shift your attention subconsciously even to this new identity that you need to have that embraces these changes. And we also need to do some work on growing your self-esteem and growing your conviction in your changes. And we need to also change your lifestyle so that these changes become a, a deep and massive part of you. And so if you do all these things, you are going to create safety. And when you create safety, you'll often be very surprised at how many other problems that solves. And so really, when you fix emotional safety, you fix this one issue. You usually fix a lot of other issues in your relationship. Because now, whether you're having some financial issues, whether you're having some issues where you can't align on things, you can't agree on things, whether you're having intimacy issues, you're having issues of depression, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter anymore because now you have the communication pipes open so that you can share it, you can talk about it, you can go through it together.
but, but of course you can't just quit safety overnight because safety is destroyed over a long period of time through that feedback loop again and expect it to be a while before you can create safety again. It's like here, expect a period where as you try to create safety, nothing happens for a long time. And often for our clients, this is six to 12 months really. But eventually as you keep being relentless, keep being consistent in trying to create safety, you'll be very surprised at the suddenness and the quickness that changes can happen when you are relentless and consistent about this. And this is also the journey for a lot of our clients as well, where nothing happens for a long time and then suddenly everything just happens all at once. And finally, I want you to understand also that it takes just one to break or perpetuate a negative cycle. So we often hear this quote of, it takes two to tango. Um, in my experience, it does not take two to tango. And the sole reason behind that is that, you know, right now, what you do is already affecting what your partner does. If what you do, how you respond is negative, that will usually lead your partner to respond in a negative way. And if you are on a brink of a divorce, a separation, or a breakdown of your relationship here, of all people, you should understand the power of what you do. That what you do can really affect what your partner does. And if you compound this over a long period of time, yes, that can lead to either feeling a strong feeling of love to each other or also a feeling of disdain to each other as well. Now, if let's say what you do can affect things to the point where now it's so negative, by definition, you can also start to change your own behavior. And when you change your own behavior, you can start to really shift the curve going upwards. Now, again, this may not happen overnight. This is gonna take consistency and perfection in the process. But we see this happening, people changing the feedback loop by themselves every single day in our program. And so, and so this is totally possible. Now in this video, I want to outline to you the what of everything here. And I wanna show you kind of a different perspective of how you can diagnose the problems in your relationship. Now, we can't really get to the how because this video is getting a bit long already. So if you want to find out more of the how and understand how all these clients that I'm showing you today, how they went from such a dire situation where it's completely hopeless and how they can save their life and also their relationship by just focusing on changing themselves and also changing the layers that we talked about earlier in this video as well. So if you want to know more about that, you can join me in my free masterclass right here above my head. Or also, I'm gonna put the link also down below this video as well. And if you want to submit your application for the Relationships Revival Program, you can also do so at the end of this masterclass as well. And if you want to download a free guide I have for you that teaches you a bit more about the frameworks of how you can guide conversations better, then you can also download the guide I have for you above my head also down below this video as well. And finally, if you want to join a community where you can post your questions and have a member of my team answer to those questions, you can also join me in my free Facebook group down below this video. In the meantime, I would love to hear from you. So if you have a comment and a question, just leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And if you found this video valuable, like it. Uh, it really helps the channel out when you do. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. In the meantime, I will leave you with these two other videos here with more skills for you to design a thriving relationship for yourself. For now, I'll see you in the next video.